The next uh, talk is called Towards Dynamic Consistency Checking in Goal-Directed Predicate Answer Set Programming, and it will be presented by Joaquin Arias. Mm -hmm. uh, please go ahead when you're ready. OK, so thank you very much for the introduction. So today I will present the work toward dynamic consistency checking in goal-directed predicate answer set programming, which is a joint work with Manuel and, and Gopal. So SCASP is a, a system that evaluates constraint as well as programs without a grounding phase either before or during the execution. It supports predicates and retain logical variable and constraint during the execution and also in the hardware set. Its operational semantics rely on bad word chaining and it returns partial stable model, which are subset of stable models with just the literals needed to support the query. It also generates justification and also in natural language. So SCASP exhibits the property for relevance. So it has been already applied in several fields for uh, common sense reasoning, for instance, even calculus that has been used to model avionic systems, explainable artificial intelligence, is the core of two natural language understanding systems that has been used in Amazon Alexa uh, social bot challenge. It has been used also in inductive logic programming systems that generate ASP programs and in some legal uh, expert systems and as a judicial discretion answers. So the problem is that the standard implementation of SCASP uh, has global constraints that are checked when the complete tentative model is found. That means that in program that we have uh, several global constraints and they generate many tentative models, the performance uh, is affected. So our proposal is to evaluate these global constraints to discard inconsistent models as early as possible. And we call this uh, technique dynamic consistency check. The idea is to check if a global constraint is inconsistent with a literal before this literal is added to a tentative model. If so, we discard the literal, we backtrack, and we look for alternative uh, uh, models. So the primary implementation of SCASP with DCC shows an speed up of more than 90%. Uh, sorry, uh, 90 times faster than without DCC. So uh, to introduce SCASP, uh, we will say that uh, the program is a set of clause, clauses like uh, in ASP, but we have at the beginning the, the constraints and then we have the positive literals and also negative literals in any order. So uh, the headless rules, which are usually called global constraints, express that the conjunction P and Q, this example, cannot be true and we will refer to them during the talk as Daniels in order to avoid misunderstanding with other constraints since we are using constraint uh, in the programs. So uh, then the execution of an ASP uh, SCAS program starts with a query. So we have a query driven executions and the answers to a query are partial stable models where each one is a subset of a stable model that satisfy the constraints, make non-negative atoms true, and makes negative atoms not probable. Since we have uh, partial models, in these partial models, we only have the atoms that are relevant to support the query uh, 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 that uh, drive the, the executions. And for each of these partial model, SCAS return on one tracking partial answer set with the justification tree of this answer and the binding with, uh, for the variables that are free in the query. So here we have an example where SCAS will be able to detect uh, even loops, which are loops with an even number of interleaving negations. And in this example, we have that they are two possible stable models in one where P is true and the other where P is false. So the execution procedure of SCASP is based on uh, rules that uh, capture the constructed negation of the predicate. We call these uh, rules the dual program. Uh, and they are able to compute the constraints for a predicate under which this call will fail. We have here an example in this rule 
uh, we will have the invocation of uh, not R uh, Y, which uh, invoke the dual, and it's returned in Y, which are the condition under which this predicate fails, R Y. So uh, this is something that if, uh, we compare with the implementation of uh, Negation as failure in, in, in Prolog is, is an improvement. The execution of SCASP also detect uh, this kind of loops where we have P if Q and not P. And in order to avoid uh, inconsistency, they are detected and we introduce a new Daniel in order to ensure that or Q is false or P can be proved in another clause even if P or Q are not needed to support the query. So in this way, we ensure that the partial model that we uh, return is a subset of a partial model in the, in the whole program. So all the Daniel at the end are collected and evaluated by adding an auxiliary goal, which is NMR check at the end of the execution of the query, as we mentioned before. And the union of the original program, the dual and the Daniels, are handled by a top-down uh, algorithm that implement the stable model semantic. There are two main uh, features uh, with respect to ASP. The first one is that we are able to evaluate uh, variables that in ASP are uh, unsafe. Here we have an example. So uh, we have that the constraints are not bound, so we have uh, infinite possible uh, values for, for these constraints, and it's not possible to make the grounded for, for this program. And here we have the query, and then we have the bindings and a partial model for, for this query. Additionally, SCAP, SCASP is able to support a list, for example. And in this example, we can make the query, which are the values, I mean, the elements, V, that are not members of this list. And we will have as, a, as an answer, the bindings where uh, that happens. Uh, here we have uh, a sketch of the interpreter uh, of SCASP. We see that first we solve the, the query, which is a list of, of goals. And finally, when it's success, we will check the non-monotonic uh, check. Here we have the, the predicate to evaluate one by one the, the goals. And if there is a user-defined predicate, we check the loops that we discussed before. There is a predicate for all, which is introduced in the compilation of the duals. And then we can also execute the buildings, for instance, the constraints in the, in the program. So the Daniels, as we saw before, when we have uh, variables means that in this case, it's false, so we don't want models where exist x uh, and y, that uh, p of x and q x and y uh, is true. That means that uh, these uh, literals cannot be simultaneously true for any value of x and y. So to ensure that uh, the partial model is consistent, we introduce a uh, Daniel that uh, check that for all x and y uh, is the case that it's not possible to have these literals. This is uh, called uh, after the, the program execution, but, but this generate and test strategy has a high impact on the performance. Let's consider this uh, program, which is a Hamiltonian program, where we want to uh, take a path. So we want to reach the node A, and we choose some of the edge of, of the graph, but we have some constraints. So we want to reach all the vertex, but we can only to, uh, we don't want to, to choose uh, an edge or to or from the same the same vertex. So let's consider this this graph, where if we execute the program, we will have three possible stable uh, partial models. We are the three possible uh, paths here. We have one of them in blue. And uh, what we want is to evaluate the Daniels as early as possible to fail and backtrack. So we don't want to generate all the possible paths and then check if these paths are Hamiltonian paths. So when an atom invoked in the Daniel is uh, to be added to the tentative model, we want to check for inconsistency. So in the general case, DCC is an instance of constraint and generate. The current implementation is a proof of concept that only check 
ground uh, literals, and a more sophisticated algorithm can impose additional constraints, not only in the rest of the atoms belonging to the partial model, but also as part of the Daniels that remains to be checked. So constraints can propagate through the candidate model to ensure that it is consistent with the, with the Daniels. Very similar to the constraint propagation mechanisms that take place in constraint satisfaction systems. So here we have the compilation, an example of the compilation of the Daniels. So let's take the Daniels in the Hamiltonian path. So for each of these uh, Daniel, we generate, in this case, two different uh, decisive rules. In the first one, we see that vertex. So the, the literal, I mean, this rule, what I mean is that we want to check the atoms in the list that are not in the model before we add in A to it. So if we have to add a vertex in the in the model, we, can, we want to check that this literal is not in the model. Otherwise, this, uh, this Daniel will be uh, uh, fired. And then in the evaluation on the normal running check, this model will be discarded. So in general, for each of the Daniels of this form, you generate a, a rule on, on of this uh, form where V of X is uh, each of the user-defined predicates or uh, literals in the in the program. So uh, in order to check this DCC, we want to, I mean, we need to extend the interpreter. And when an atom is present in a Daniel, is a candidate to be added to the model, we want to run this uh, DCC check. So here we see that when we want to add a goal to the to the model, we uh, execute the evaluation of the CCC. And if that is the case that G is ground and is success that uh, the rule that we saw before holds for this uh, goal with the list of atoms that are already in the in the in the list, then uh, it fails, which means that these atoms is not introduced in the model. So let's see how it works with uh, our previous examples. So we start with the query. So from the clause in line two, we choose uh, BC to be BA to be added to the tentative model. Then we have to reach uh, the vertex B. So we add AB. Everything is okay, it's consistent. So we continue, we have already reached the node A. So we have a initial model. So we can check if that is consistent with the non-monotonic check rules. So uh, next, because uh, this Daniel, we have to reach uh, the node C. In this case, we choose this, this edge, but it, it is inconsistent with the previous uh, model because for this uh, DCC rules, when we instantiate it, we see that it's an inconsistency with the edge that previously we select A, B. So the evaluation backtracks and continue the search using another edge. Here we see the evaluation of the performance with DCC. We have uh, two uh, combinational programs, that is the Hamiltonian that we already see and in Queens. We see these speedups. And the last one is relevant because it's an Enquins attack where we uh, mm, encode this DCC with auxiliary predicates. So we only uh, allow to select a Queens if this Queens is not attacked. So we avoid to introduce the Daniels. And we see that with uh, DCC, we don't have to use this. I mean, we, we have even better performance than with this auxiliary predicate. And here we can evaluate how it works if we compare the models that are generated or discarded during the execution of DCC. We see that without DCC, we have to generate many, many uh, models in, in Queens. That is not the case in Hamiltonian, and it's a very nice uh, example because this uh, first Daniel that we have to ensure that all the vertex are rich from the path, uh, we only generate, I mean, or we generate the same, mm, the, the, the same models, but uh, uh, with DCC, we prune the search in in the evaluation of the non-monotonic check rules. So to conclude, uh, we saw a preliminary design of DCC, which is a technique that anticipates a consistency evaluation of tentative models in SHASP. 
we see that this technique check the Daniels as early as possible rather than when uh, a full model is, is found. So we have the ability to detect inconsistency and that increases uh, the performance. Early check, uh, Daniel checking can beat programs that use auxiliary predicates, as we saw with the Queen's example. Uh, but uh, of course, the current uh, implementation has some from improvements. In particular, we want to introduce the constraints, reducing the domain of the constraint variables, and uh, that will open the possibility to further gains in programs using ASP and constraints. So thank you very much for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, please thank the speaker however you can. Um, so we have some time for questions. We are about five minutes behind, but uh, that wasn't, uh, but the current speaker has only used about 15 minutes. So we should uh, allow some time for questions. Um, I'll just give people a minute if they want to type or uh, add something to the Q&A panel. Uh, so while we wait, I had a question, uh, which was on your evaluation slide, you had some uh, benchmarks with uh, familiar kind of uh, combinatorial search problems. Um, just out of curiosity, how would the performance compare with uh, some other uh, ASP system that is based on grounding? So. Uh, like Klingo, for example. Do you I mean, the performance, I mean, Klingo is a, a very, yeah. I mean, developed uh, system. So, and they are focused on combinatorials. So they are, th th there is not comparison in, in space. Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 but, I appreciate I mean, that. Yes, the, but I mean, the idea is that SCASP, mature system isn't the, a fair the goal comparison. of SCASP is to knowledge representation, but there are cases where you need combinatorial a part of the program has to be combinatorial. So we think that this proposal will be a, a very good uh, improvement for these cases, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, um, and there is a question in the QA box, which by coincidence is from the next speaker anyway, so he can answer it, ask it. Uh, uh, he can ask okay. directly if you would like. Please, go ahead. Okay, uh, I, I was just uh, curious whether you have considered extensions to this language. So let's let's say having uh, aggregate conditions in rule bodies. I mean, uh, I, I know that in, in ASP that is that is available. So I don't know how to, but maybe it will be a very nice feature in in SCASP also. But we didn't think about that yet. Okay, um, I know some work from Antonius Weinzierl with Alpha Solver. Uh, together with him, we ha we made some uh, 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 progress in this direction. But uh, well, the, uh, naturally, this is kind of a uh, nice extension to have in in a, in a rule language. Yes, maybe. And I mean, o other uh, way to to introduce aggregates. I don't know if it's more or less the same as is implemented in ASP is, is like in, in Prolog, where you want to compute the aggregation of, of the results. So you want to, to reduce the search by combining uh, results using a lattice or something like that, where maybe it's not the case in ASP, but there are some works in, in Prolog. Mm. Thanks. OK, so we do. Maybe have time for one very quick question uh, to stay on track if anyone has one, but going once, going twice. Okay, I don't think there are any further questions. At least nobody has a burning question at the moment. Um, so uh, if we can move on to the next presentation, please. Perfect. Thank you very much.